Salam. Today I'll take you to a time when genies granted wishes, jinns controlled human souls, and many wonders could be found in the bazaars. I'll guide you through a journey that will last a million and one nights. The Blind Wise Man It was a sunny day in Antioch, a thriving and prosperous city under the Ottoman Empire. A wealthy merchant was dying in a big house out of the city's heart, leaving all his fortune to his son. The son followed his father's work and successfully traded goods. Brokers, experts, and people around his father cooperated with him, and he was known to be very smart and bright in his job. One day, experts informed him that in the city of Venice in Rome, sandalwood is very rare and expensive, and whenever some sandalwood is brought to the city, its price is equal to gold and silver. The merchant man got greedy and thought, I will spend all my capital and buy sandalwood. Then I'll take it to Venice and sell it at the price of gold and silver and spend the rest of my life happily with this incalculable income. And so he did. Back in the day, the communication was made entirely by people traveling by horses, camels, and palanquin. It took several months for news to reach long distances. Whenever the merchants wanted to send goods to other cities, he would join a caravan, sell them, and then buy other goods that had a customer in their homeland and return. The Ottoman merchant sold everything he had in the warehouse, bought a hundred bundles of sandalwood, and loaded them on several camels, and went towards Venice with the caravan of merchants. He was on his way for several months, and as soon as he was a few miles from Venice, he separated from the large caravan and settled by a river to rest. The large caravan then left him behind. While the Ottoman merchant was setting up his tent by the river, some informants, who were paid by Venetian merchants, told them that a man with a hundred bundles of sandalwood would soon enter the city. One of those local merchants that sold sandalwood in Venice and was a smart and fraudulent man got to know about this news and worried because the new material would decrease its price along with his profits. He was plotting a plan to keep his monopoly in Venice, so as soon as he knew what to do, he took some of his servants with him in luxurious clothes, like the rich people who go outside the city for entertainment. After that, he took the travel equipment and some sandalwood that he had in store, loaded the horses, and set off until they reached the place where the Ottoman merchant had settled. The Venetian merchant set up his tent on the other side of the river, made a stove, and put a large pot on top of it to cook food, and lit a fire to the precious sandalwood under the pot, and burned them like worthless firewood. After a few moments, the smell of sandalwood rose and spread in the air. Thinking that his goods were on fire, the Ottoman merchant ran out of his tent and asked his servants, What's going on? With a confused look, they replied, Nothing. The smoke belongs to the other side of the river. Some people have settled there and are cooking. The Ottoman merchant, surprised by the smell of sandalwood, came near the Italian's tents. They were laughing and seemed to be having a good time. He then asked, Where do you come from? They replied, Venice. Are you leaving the city? No, we came out to have fun and receive some fresh air. Please join us and eat. Thank you, that won't be necessary. I was wondering why you are burning sandalwood instead of firewood. They looked at him as if he was asking the stupidest question they'd heard. Why would we do that? The Ottoman merchant felt his heart drop at the evident misfortune, but he still asked, Don't you have firewood in Venice? They laughed even harder and then, as if stating the obvious, said, But sandal is more fragrant. Why burn anything else when there are sandals? The Ottoman merchant felt betrayed by his counselors. If people in this city burn sandalwood instead of firewood, it means its price is probably not much different. He whispered bitterly. The Venetian merchant looked at him and, trying to cheer him up, asked, Where do you come from? You must be going to our city. May your journey be blessed. You have so much cargo with you. What new thing have you brought us? All these are sandals, said the man, crestfallen. The Venetians laughed again and said, It's unbelievable. Are you kidding? Are you out of mind bringing sandals in Venice? Here, sandalwood is consumed only in kitchens and the whole city is full of it. Tell us the truth, what is it in the cargo? Are you smuggling something? The Ottoman merchant looked away, this time embarrassed, thinking he must look like an idiot. It is the truth. It looks like I made a mistake and carried cumin to Kerman. They stopped laughing. This time with sympathy, he replied, Right. We are also very sorry that you took the trouble in vain. And instead of a thousand other things that could be useful, you brought something that will cause a loss for you. The Ottoman merchant thought for a while and asked, 
Okay, what do you think I should do now? They looked at each other, and the Roman merchant said, Nothing. It's a thing of the past. We don't know of any city nearby where there are buyers for sandals. You can't even return the goods to your city because it is such a long way. Now it is probably best to sell the material at whatever price you can and buy other goods, and if God wills, you will benefit this time. But there are no buyers for these woods in Venice. We trade wood ourselves, and we are aware of that. We even wanted to take some sandalwood to Antioch. No, don't do that. And if you want to bring goods over there, I know better options. The Venetian merchant said, Thank you, man. And in order to help each other in the world of cooperation, now that you have made this mistake, I would be willing to buy your sandalwood for a price. Of course, this deal is like gambling, which is more likely to lose. But I have promised myself not to deal with a coward. The Ottoman man, confused, asked, Why do you think I'm a coward? The Venetian merchant said, I don't mean you especially. I'm saying in general. We are men of our words, and when we speak, we stand by its advantages and disadvantages. But there was a time when some businessmen came to our city. They were afraid of a deal, or they made a deal and broke it later. The Ottoman merchant said, No, you still don't know me. I stand by my word, even if it is all a loss. Now there is no question of profit or loss here. You have done something reckless. I am doing a deal recklessly. I am ready to buy all these woods for a pint of gold or silver or jewels or whatever you want. We will finish the deal now and take the wood to the city and store it in one of the city's warehouses. And then we will show up tomorrow and deliver whatever you choose in exchange. The Ottoman merchant was satisfied. The transaction was made and a contract was written. The witnesses signed it and the cargo was taken to the city and deposited in the warehouse. It was agreed that the buyer and the seller would come together the day after tomorrow, and with the consent of one of the parties, the wood would be delivered to the other. The rent of the warehouse should be paid by the one who takes the wood. The Ottoman merchant paid his servants and sent them away, and he himself set out in the city to find a house. In one of the alleys, an old Turkish woman asked him, You look Ottoman. Do you need a room? Yes. The whole thing was wearing him down. Come. I will give you a room and host you at a low cost. You will not find a more comfortable house anywhere else. The merchant accepted, got a room in the old woman's house, paid for rent and food, and went to rest. At night, when the old woman had prepared dinner, they asked about each other's history. It turned out that the old woman had a son who served in the house of a blind man, and she was renting her big house's rooms to travelers to earn some income. The Ottoman merchant also narrated his situation and described the sandalwood transaction. The old woman surprisedly said, Wow, you made a deal that wasted all your hard work. You, who suffered for six months of travel, would have waited another day and asked the price of sandals in the city. Some people in this city are very cunning and crafty, and everything you said about burning sandalwood and cooking food was all staged so that they could buy sandals for free. What is the price of sandalwood here? Asked the surprised merchant. The old woman said, The price of gold, the price of silver. Here sandals are more expensive than anything else. The merchant shouted, Oh my God, I was robbed. What can I do now? But she answered, Every problem has a solution. Now there is time until the day after tomorrow. You must be careful. And tomorrow when you walk around the city, do not talk to anyone about this matter and do not trade with anyone. And whenever you see a Venetian merchant, do not say anything about your loss until I think about it and find a way to get your sandals back. The Ottoman merchant said, If this happens and I can get the sandals back and sell them at a good price, I will give you whatever you want and make you and your son rich. The woman looked at him with sympathy and said, It's fine. Just remember not to talk about this issue with anyone tomorrow. And you don't trade with the people of this city because there are many shameless people here. Everyone is in league with each other and the city's judge will take their side if you have a problem. The merchant promised to act according to the old woman's advice and not to talk or do business with anyone. He slept that night, hoping to get the sandals back. The following day, the Ottoman merchant went out of the house to walk around the city and looked at the streets and markets. He admired the population of the city and the prosperity of the market there. He stopped at the Rialto market one of the most beautiful places he had ever seen, and the shops were full of goods. He watched the market, and then walked to a bar where people were sitting and drinking, and some were playing backgammon and chess. Because he was tired of walking, he entered the bar, 
sat down in a corner to drink wine, relieve his fatigue, and watched the nearby chess game. The Ottoman merchant knew chess well and saw that the players played very poorly. Meanwhile, the chess players had a dispute, and when they saw that the foreign man was watching their game with attention, they asked him to judge. As a chess master, he resolved their problem, and they accepted. The Ottoman merchant was proud of his judgment and said, I'm also ready to play a hand of chess with you, the chess player said. No, we don't gamble with cowards, we play with men. The Ottoman merchant, who had forgotten what the Venetian merchant did to him and what the old woman said yesterday, angrily and proud of his chess skills, answered, How do you know that I am a coward and afraid of betting? If I were a coward, I wouldn't have trampled the sea and the land, and I wouldn't have come to this city. Now that this is the case, I will play chess on everything you say to find out who is cowardly and who is brave. One of the gamblers said, Very well, if you are a man and show signs of masculinity, we will play on whatever you want. He complacently said, Whatever you say. They looked at each other maliciously and replied, If we win, we will suggest three things. You do one of them, and if you win, suggest three things, and we will do one of them. And anyone who doesn't want to make one of the three suggestions will have to pay a thousand gold coins in cash. The merchant agreed and thought, I will have fun and take a thousand gold coins. Then they made a promise and started playing. The Italian gambler was an expert chess player and won the game from the very first. The Ottoman merchant hopelessly said, Very well, tell me your three suggestions. There are three of us and we share everything together. We each offer one. Then he reached into his pocket and took out a piece of stone and placed it on the table and said, I want you to sew me a piece of clothing from this stone. And his friends laughed. The Ottoman merchant said, Well, that's a weird suggestion. What else? The first friend of the gambler said, My suggestion is that we go to the seaside right now and I want you to drink all the seawater in one breath. The Ottoman merchant was upset and said, I don't think you guys are rational, but tell me the third proposal as well. The second friend of the gambler said, Here is what I want. I want a pound of meat from your leg muscles. And if you do not follow any of these three suggestions according to the agreement you have made, you have lost a thousand gold coins and must pay. As twilight falls on this chapter of our tale, intrigue deepens and uncertainties unfold. Will our Ottoman traveler break free from the chess player's web? To uncover the truth, join us in the next part. Don't miss out. Watch, subscribe, and like the video to journey on. Stay engaged and let's unravel the story together.